This is not tech poi. Neither is this. Nope, not this either. Fighting words? Perhaps, but I'm also hoping once I've made my case that you'll understand why I'm saying so, and why me saying so is not a value judgment on any of those artists. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. In this video, I want to dive into how we talk about artistic movements in the poi world and why I think we missed a pretty big shift roughly 10 years ago. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyrotera Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Becca Bekkonen. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. I have every faith that this is going to be a controversial video. A couple years ago, I uploaded a video outlining why I believed tech poi had declined and eventually died out as an artistic movement, and people were pretty upset with me for it. So let me say right from the jump here that the label we place on a style of poi isn't a statement on its difficulty, value, or worth. Lots of stuff being done today is incredibly difficult and advanced, but that doesn't mean that it's being created with the same intention or cultural content Context as tech poi was more than a decade ago. I think it's helpful to keep track of these sorts of artistic movements in the poi world because they can tell us a lot about how demographics shift over time, the way culture evolves, and even what are seen as the essential values within a community. So with all that said, let's talk about tech poi and the movement that I believe succeeded it. Tech Poi is an artistic movement within the Poi and Flow Arts community that I believe lasted roughly from 2005 to 2013 that was dominated by three very key tenets. The first is the parameterization of Poi. That is, thinking of Poi tricks as consisting of a set of variables that can be adjusted to produce a variety of different results. The second is a focus on Poi tricks based on roulette curves like those traced out by a spirograph. This places the emphasis not on the immediate movement or momentum of the Poi, but the shapes that it traces out over time and how those shapes can interrelate or be combined. And finally, attempts to form broad theories explaining the relationships between a wide variety of Poi tricks and hopefully anticipate tricks that had yet to be discovered. Covered. To my mind, tech poi as a movement began to emerge with the publication of Reb's Spiriculist Manifesto, which collected together his thoughts on poi inversions. The movement then crystallized with the creation of the tech poi group on Tribe.net in 2005 thus giving the movement its name. Tech Poi wasn't simply a new label for advanced Poi work. It was a specific artistic movement that represented a particular philosophy toward Poi that was a product of a number of cultural and artistic trends. Contemporary Poi had been floating around as a somewhat nebulous and decentralized phenomenon for more than a decade, because the only way you could learn to spin at the time was either from an in-person teacher or a DVD. The adoption of Poi happened in very small numbers and styles were very personalized and regionally specific. As access to the internet became more widespread and online forums a popular way to create online communities of like-minded people, poi spinners from all over the world began exchanging ideas back and forth via forums like Home of Poi, Spiriculism, and Tribe. Because these online forums weren't always terribly user-friendly, they tended to attract people that were computer savvy. These were people with a great capacity for abstract reasoning and logic. These poi spinners, overwhelmingly young men, gravitated towards poi tricks that could easily be visualized with the limited graphics capabilities of these online forums. Tricks that could be presented with simple charts were those most likely to be understood and learned by other people reading these posts. And just a few years earlier, Nick Woolsey had radically changed the poi landscape by popularizing flowers with his milestone video, Dervishly Yours. Flowers were a perfect fit for this type of visualization. Many of the seminal works of the tech poi movement, including Unit Circle Theory, Vulcan Tech Gospel, and Nine Square Theory, were all attempts by computer-savvy young men to apply the tools of combinatorics and logic to the world of poi flowers. In the process, they shared resources for discovering a wide variety of poi flowers, hybrids, 
grids, and tools for transitioning between them. The introduction of YouTube became a catalyst for this movement by making it possible for people performing these complex tricks to share videos of themselves performing them instead of simply charts demonstrating the core concepts. A popular format for these videos was the tech blog. Tech blogs usually consisted of a performer demonstrating a series of individual tricks or concepts they wished to showcase, rather than an explicit attempt at performance with any form of narrative. Few tech poi spinners attempted to work their tricks together into acts, pieces, or performances. The goal was to create all-encompassing theories, rather than showcase their work in a format more accessible to people outside the flow arts world. And because tech poi focused so completely on patterns, it was ideally suited to both fire and LED, two of the most popular styles of spinning poi at the time. But the drive to create ever more complex patterns frequently led to the creation of moves that were completely indecipherable to anyone who had only a passing familiarity with poi or none at all. To say nothing of branches of poi theory that got ever more abstract and divorced from classical poi techniques. Quarter time, third order motions, and toroids all piled on complexity to create families of tricks that were incredibly difficult to perform cleanly. And the widespread adoption of both social media in the form of Instagram and TikTok, as well as the wide availability of cheap but high quality cameras and smartphones, opened up the floodgates to a variety of other styles and approaches to the prop. The first hints of a departure from the core tenets of tech poi started coming around in the early 2010s. Cyril Humain, a Swiss poi spinner who'd first made his name with a widely encompassing treatise on symmetry and poi patterns, made a radical shift in his style to jumpstart contact poi as a discrete corner of the poi world. His videos, mana poi and brainstorming, became revolutionary cornerstones of a new style of poi that had little to do with traditional weaves or flowers. And Scottish poi spinner Keith Marshall released a series of videos reintroducing the poi world to a variety of poi tosses and negative space tricks heavily influenced by the juggling world. But truth be told, I can remember exactly when tech poi died because I was there to watch it happen, and it took place over the summer of 2013 thanks to two major events. The first was Keith Marshall coming to the United States to tour the Flow Festival circuit. He arrived ready to spread the gospel of three poi and didn't just spin them, but juggled them. He quickly won an enormous amount of influence over the young tech spinners on the festival circuit that year, who threw themselves passionately into learning his techniques. The second was the European Juggling Convention, held that summer in Toulouse, France. Not only was this location relatively accessible to international flyers, it was also being held at one of the most prestigious circus schools in Europe. This convention had an enormous impact, not just on the young poi spinners that Keith was influencing, but on the flow arts world in general. Flow artists from all prop disciplines came away from the event with a strong drive to integrate circus training and performance techniques into the flow arts, and some even sought assimilation into the juggling and circus world entirely. There was a word that I often heard people use to describe the tricks and sequences inspired by these techniques, and one that I think makes for a great label for this artistic movement. That word is manipulation. And just like tech poi, manipulation had several tenets at its core. The first and probably most important was the integration of juggling concepts into poi. From numbers juggling to styles of catches and throws, balancing and contact, manipulation centers around essentially treating the poi as one would a club. The second is virtuosic control over the poi's momentum. Manipulation requires the capacity to make infinitesimally small changes to the movement and inertia of different segments of the poi to retain clean lines lines and trajectories for throws, rolls, and balances. Finally, there is an overwhelming emphasis on clarity and cleanliness of technique. It's not enough to come up with a dynamite combo of poi moves. The lines and presentation for those moves must be immaculate. You'll also note that I've started referring to poi in this context, not as poi spinning, but just simply as poi and that's no accident. Frequently, manipulation doesn't even involve the poi actually spinning. Many of the moves used in manipulation require none of the kinesthetic techniques we'd associate with things like weaves or even flowers. There is now an entirely new way to train the prop that centers more on balance and control over throws than playing control or adding or removing pedals. And this difference in focus and philosophy has also resulted in a huge change in culture and demographics too. For one thing, while tech poi was dominated by computers 
savvy young men, manipulation has less of an emphasis on mathematical reasoning or theoretical constructs. Manipulation more often simply borrows decades-old theory from the juggling world and applies it to poi tricks. And because of the incredible amount of physical precision required by most manipulation tricks, people who engage in it train physically in a much more disciplined and consistent fashion than those who were deeply invested in the tech poi movement. The mental component in tech poi was as important, if not more important, than the physical component. You'd spend as much time theorizing about new tricks as you would trying to figure out how to actually perform them. With manipulation, on the other hand, hours spent training are the primary focus. Manipulation also favors an act that would have been considered unthinkable in the tech poi era. Many times a performer will simply stop the poi's movement entirely to set up new tricks or combos, or even just to showcase how clean one's lines are. Tech poi embraced a variety of ways to change the direction or plane of the poi, but stopping the movement of the poi entirely and keeping it in suspension was almost never done. And unlike tech poi, the influence of circus and manipulation has also favored putting together all of these tricks and combos into longer acts that are intended for stage performance. Okay, so real talk. Why am I so focused on placing a division between these two artistic movements in the poi world? Well, first up, I think that it's important to honor our artistic movements for their own intentions rather than see them in the context of other artistic movements. Impressionism was seen as degenerate when it first emerged in the salons of Paris. The older academic style was seen as true art, and yet, the fact of the matter was that Impressionism was conveying its own form of truth. It simply had a different goal and a different perspective on the world than the academic style did. Likewise, manipulation as a style is succeeding on its own terms. It doesn't need to be tech poi to be accomplishing what it's setting out to do. Do we have clean and beautiful lines? Check. Do we have poi being used as a discrete object and its relationship to the human body explored in great detail? Check. Have many of the more important concepts and tricks in juggling been successfully performed with poi? Check. And I think tech poi also succeeded, but at very different goals. Did it take a chaotic and random assortment of poi tricks and come up with ways to categorize them into something easier to understand? Check. Did it guide us to a diverse array of mathematically beautiful poi patterns, flowers, and hybrids that have now become standard? Check. Did it give us tools for understanding how poi moved and what other potential moves awaited for us out there? Check. Second, understanding the context for different artistic movements coming and going can tell us a lot about our broader culture and the impacts that it has on art. Manipulation seeks to integrate techniques and ideas from the juggling world into poi, but that wouldn't be possible without a highly developed culture around numbers juggling that social media and online video help to make possible. It's a style of poi that's ideally suited to short, vertically formatted videos that are designed to show off a single trick or sequence and give the audience instant gratification and payoff. It's a style of poi that centers the prop definitively in the unlit world. As fire spinning becomes more difficult to engage in due to permitting restrictions and the price of fuel going up, having a style of poi that not only works but works better without fire is a great way to adapt to changing times. And it is an excellent fit for people seeking refuge from an increasingly abstract, unstable world with something that is physical tactile, and immediate. Finally, I think it's important to recognize these shifts in artistic movements because of the ways that they can influence the artistic movements that come after them. Is it possible that tech poi could have a resurgence in popularity? You never know. I'd say that the Russian school of poi spinning has been keeping many of the stylistic conventions of tech poi alive for the past decade. If tech poi can be overtaken by another artistic movement, it also stands to reason that this could happen to manipulation too. What will come next? Personally, I see some signs that social media is likely to change radically in the coming years. TikTok has dropped from being the most visited site on the internet to not even being in the top 10 this year. How might a change in how we communicate and share affect the poi world? We have Generation Alpha beginning to enter their teen years now. How has coming of age during and after the COVID pandemic impacted how they interact with their hobbies and the world around them? Will they be looking to find a different relationship with the prop than either millennial tech poi artists or the Zoomer manipulation artists? Placing people and art into discrete boxes is always one of those exercises that carries with it potential for both great rewards as well as great risks. At its best, identifying movements like this can help us gain clarity and appreciation for their philosophy and intent, but can also impose unnatural and inappropriate boundaries on phenomena that may or may not fall cleanly into those boxes. 
Famously, the media coined the term grunge to describe a cadre of Seattle-based bands that played loud, guitar-based rock centered around introspection, alienation, and societal decay. And the bands hated the term. They felt like it was an inaccurate and superficial simplification of their work and relationships. It could be that tech boy has just become a generic term like modern or alternative rock. Terms that are meaningless aside from signifying that the radio station formats that host them are playing rock, but not classic rock. Tech poi, likewise, might simply signify an artist performing advanced poi in whatever specific form that happens to take at a given time. But I think the words that we use should have some meaning in context. Otherwise, why use them in the first place? I think words can give power to a movement by naming it. I think that they can help us clarify what we do and do not identify with when we see a work of art. And if nothing else, they can start a discussion that we can learn a lot from. But what do you think? Do you think manipulation is a good label for the style of poi that's been dominant for the past decade? Do you think it should all just be tech poi? And if so, what should we call the style that was dominant in the late 2000s? Drop me a comment and let me know. Did you get anything out of this video? Please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going and to help my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching this video. It would not have been possible without the wonderful support of my Patreon supporters. In particular, I want to give a shout out to my Flow patrons who are listed on screen now. If you're interested in checking out more videos I've done on Poi and Flow Arts culture, I'll go ahead and leave a link to a playlist down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel, I will leave a link to my Patreon down in the description as well. Make sure to get out and flow today, and I'll see you with a brand new video real soon. Take care now. Peace.